Hi, my name is Dr. Padilla. I'm a professor in computer science and psychology, and I've been a professor for over five years now. Today, I have the great pleasure of speaking with three first year PhD students about their PhD interviews. This is the number one question that I get asked. What type of questions come up in interviews? How are the interviews different? How are they similar? And I thought the best people to tell you about their experience are individuals who just went through the interview process. We are going to hear from individuals at MIT, Northeastern, and Harvard, and they will give you their insights about work in terms of interviewing, things that they would do differently, and common types of questions they got across all of the interviews. So I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Ella Hugi. I'm from California, and I'm a first year PhD student at Harvard. Hi, my name is Kai. I'm a first year student at Northeastern. Hi, I'm Arna Verma. Uh, I'm a first year PhD student at MIT. How did you prepare for your interviews? I really didn't do too much specific interview preparation. I think the preparation I did for my applications was all the information I needed to know. So learning about the school, the lab, the type of work they're producing, and then should an interview come up, I just refreshed on all of the papers in the lab, the work they were doing, the advisor's previous work, etc. And I think that helped me prepare to have a good intellectual conversation with the advisor. Um, so I did some minimal preparation. I wrote down a list of my research interests that I could talk about quickly. I practiced doing an elevator pitch. I thought of some questions they could ask me and I tried to answer those, but some of it was just winging it at the interviews, like you never know what you're gonna get asked. So I tried to be like calm before I started. Yeah, so I think I just tried to, I think just look at my research statement and honestly, I think really think about why I felt compelled to do this research. And like, I think that was kind of like my high level discussion. How I really prepared was I asked friends, I was like, interview me. <laughs> like, what do you like about this research topic? Uh, I found out dear, by like other people interviewing me that like I should know like both the definitions of these terms, but like how they relate to like existing literature in the field and like be able to pull up references of like contrasting them not just against like what I've done but what other people have done and like maybe uh, kind of positioning my work in the existing set of literature. And so yeah, I, I think it was just interviewing with other students back and forth um, and then also just asking advice with different faculty members to uh, that I'm like really, really comfortable with to um, also interview me. Another thing that I did was to kind of have a cohesive like narrative for my research and my research journey. I think that helped me out a lot just thinking about like there was some reason why I did this research project and went from this research project to this other like like initially when I first started I thought it was just absolutely random like I was like oh I did this project and this project and this project and this project but I think if you really think through you can really find these like super interesting threads that like even you yourself might have like thought a little bit about when you were like starting that new project or what made you excited to jump from one project to this other project. I think I thought really hard about like what really excited me, what motivated me to jump from A to B um, or like do these string of projects. Um, so I think that was really helpful is trying to paint out a narrative for myself. What kind of questions came up most often? I would say there were three things that came up most often. It was questions about my prior experience, questions about my research interests slash my research fit, and questions about what I actually wanted to do, if I had any idea of kind of the direction I wanted to go in. So I think that the advisor kind of wants to see how you can retell your experience, kind of gauge your interest in it and how much work you put into it. Then they want to obviously know if you'll fit well with what they want to do. And finally, they want to know whether or not you have a concrete plan, both of which are fine if you do or don't, but that's kind of something that could help them figure out if you'd be a good fit in their lab. I don't know, I think this varies so much, but for the Viz programs I applied to, I got asked pretty standard, like what are your research interests? That came up in, every single interview, I think. And I also got asked, like, what are some potential research projects you'd be interested in pursuing? Those are the main two ones, honestly. Like, I think 90% of my research interview time was, or of my interview time was spent on talking about research. And there wasn't any, like, knowledge questions, which I had heard come up in other fields, but I don't know, I never really got anything like that. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, just a lot of the questions that I had previously mentioned actually 
just c came up naturally. So it was like, tell me about your research journey. Why did you do this project? Or um, for me, I started in visualization and then did some work within cognitive science. And I guess now I'm working with a PI who's also in visualization. And uh, I think something that people were interested in was why am I kind of like re-switching back to computer science or like why did I switch away from computer science into cognitive science and back and I think for me uh, that was like kind of a popular question was just like why did you switch areas why did you switch projects and then I think another common question was just uh, yeah describe your research in terms of what other people have done and like why is this research valuable? I think a lot of questions kind of are tailored towards your specific research. I think a lot of at least good interview questions will ask you like, what was your thought process behind this? Why did you make the decision? And even if you didn't make the decision, if you're like, oh, this decision was made by my PI. Like, I think that to me, it feels unsatisfactory because you yourself are there, right? You yourself are like probably a major part of the project. Um, so you have to kind of understand what are the trade-offs and the decisions that you made in your research projects and like understand what your uh, research goals were within the project. And I think in my interview questions, I think uh, people want to hear that very specifically and hear like a coherent answer for like, what are the main like, research goals that I was trying to work on um, and how that motivated my topic that I want to study. What was the hardest question you were asked? The hardest question I was asked was this question of what do you want to do in your PhD? Like, do you have an idea of what your thesis would be, et cetera? I think I have very interdisciplinary interest. And so I didn't want it to be too specific intentionally, but this made it hard to kind of answer this question of what do you see yourself doing in your PhD? I got challenged on one of my research ideas a few times because it wasn't very solid, specifically on like what kind of real world impact it would have. And that was hard to, to answer in the moment. And it was something I hadn't thought about the first time it came up, which I definitely should have going into those pitches. And I think that was like the most nervous I felt. Honestly, I'm going to give the same answer again and again, but I think it was just like, why did you work on this research project? Sometimes it feels a bit daunting to have a compelling answer, right? And I think it was so scary because I was like, I don't know, this seemed cool, but like, I think um, like that's kind of what I wanted to say, but uh, I think what makes that question hard is that like you should be able to contextualize what is hard or like what was difficult about researching that uh, topic or like why that topic was interesting to you to research and like what in the existing literature, like what did the existing literature not cover? Um, and so I think like just going through those things, it was kind of a little bit daunting, which is, yeah, what made the question hard. What questions did you ask of the programs or faculty? My main question was about advising style. I had kind of an idea of what I wanted in an advisor, but also I just wanted to know if they kind of didn't fit that mold, just what their style was like, so I was prepared for that. I also asked a bunch of questions about TAing, funding, et cetera, and also kind of what a good PhD student looked like to them, like what they thought made a successful PhD student. Definitely asked, what are you looking for in your PhD students? Like what kind of things do you expect from them? Uh, like in the first year, in the rest of the program. I also asked about location a lot because that was important for me. I wanted to know like how the city was in their opinion. Um, there were a lot of transplants from, to uh, from Seattle to Boston, so I, I kind of got the impression that it was a good place to live. I asked mainly what their lab would look like in five years. I think that was an interesting question because I think a lot of faculty when I'm applying, uh, I guess they have their existing body of research and I think it's only natural to assume that they'll be doing that research forever and ever and never switch any direction. But, you know, I think I'll, like kind of through the process and maybe even a bit before I learned that like, oh, actually, wait, no, everyone's a researcher. Everyone has their own thoughts and cool and interesting ideas and directions that they want to move into. And so something that I asked the faculty was, what would they envision their lab in five years? Are there ideas that they're excited about that's like not covered in their existing body of work? Because I really wanted to know like if the research that I'm pursuing is going to be important to them 
them? Or like, is this just like going to be like a one-off thing <laughs> that they like somewhat care about, but not really. Um, they're just excited about it at the moment. So I think that was super interesting. And then I also tried to ask about the lab, like social dynamics and like kind of the values of the lab. I think it's really important for everyone to be like open um, and everyone to be respectful in the lab. And I think like promoting those goals uh, and like having a lab culture, which is like healthy, I think is probably the biggest important is somewhere where you're gonna stay for like five years. And I think having a healthy attitude um, within the lab is also very important or having the PI have a healthy attitude towards work-life balance and also the students they hire and how they treat their students and like the expectations in the lab are all super important. Did you notice any similarities across interviews? Yeah, I would say most interviews followed kind of a similar arc, like I mentioned prior research, um, research fit, and then also what you expected to do. Definitely research focused. I don't know, most of them were casual, I'd say. I don't know, they, they all kind of blended together by the end be honest uh yes i think um there's just a lot of standard questions of like what's your research describe to me your research background and things like that were there any big differences between them there weren't big differences however there was one lab that i interviewed with in which they required or asked me to do a project for them prior so they wanted me to kind of do a little mini mock proposal to both i think demonstrate that i was able to do independent research and also that i was kind of committed to this lab and so they had me do this body of work i guess over winter break and then I interviewed with them separately about that and then also about my potential fit with the advisors. Maybe for the more like prestigious programs where there are more applicants, it was more fast paced. Like they were probably trying to screen more people and so they had more questions prepared. Um, I felt like they were a bit faster. Other programs, especially where I knew people beforehand, were more casual, just chatting about you know what to expect in the program, especially for the interviews where I'd already interviewed with another professor at the program. It was mainly just chatting, <laughs> I'd say. I don't think there were too many big differences. Probably the biggest difference is just like people talked about their own research topic, maybe a little bit about how your research relates to their research topics, but. That was about the biggest difference. Knowing what you know now, would you prepare differently? I think I'm pretty happy with my preparation. I think this question of what do you want to do in your PhD, potentially I would have had more concrete options. I think that would help convey to the advisor that I still am open to many things and also that I do want my work to be fairly interdisciplinary. Yeah, I think the main thing that I would do differently is also prepare to talk about like big picture. What are my research plans in the rest of the PhD program? I kind of focused a bit too much on specific research projects that, you know, I'm probably not going to do at this point. And I think it would have also been good to go in with a vision for like what I wanted to accomplish in the next five years. Yeah, like I mentioned in my first question, I would just get a lot more feedback early on. And then I think that has made me really excited about, you know, pursuing even the topics that I'm currently pursuing in my PhD. So I, I would just improve how I've looked at like conducting research, not just as an application to the PhD, but you know, what I'm going to be doing for the next five, six years and possibly my whole life. So it's, it's a good way to just reflect on yourself I think. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this type of video useful, definitely hit the like button and subscribe for more content on academic success. I find it truly so fascinating to learn about people's different experiences. I've interviewed almost 100 PhD student applicants at this time, but I don't know all of the other experiences and different approaches at different labs. So hopefully you found this useful. Academia can be tough, but you don't have to go through it alone. Keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.